all right all right yet again i start every video with all right all right i don't know why but travis here with the modern bay company it's been a hot minute but we are in the middle of doing brake steering suspension on this guy um, as well as honestly in the middle of uh, about four other conversions right now so uh but i wanted to do a quick wrap today uh we're working on the brakes uh in particular right here so um, I just wanted to show you guys some tips and tricks, uh, some things that, and some things to look out for, uh, I guess, while you're doing these rear brake jobs. So uh, right here, I'm going to hold this up. We looking all right? You see that okay? There we go. Okay, so this is, look at us. We're a cute couple. <laughs> um, this is the, the rear brake assembly from a 1971, the bus behind me, uh, Volkswagen Bay Window bus. And as you can see here, this has all been rebuilt, um, bearings all the way out, and it's gorgeous. Um, but I'm going to walk through some of the things to look out for. So at the top of that assembly, the most common thing uh, that fails on the really any drum brake system is the wheel cylinder. Um, so this guy, uh, it pushes out at the top. Oh yeah, boom. <laughs> uh, pushes out on the brake shoes, uh, pushing them against the brake drum on the outside. Uh, allowing your brakes to actually work but what happens and you can see this when you get your wheel off when you get your brake drum off you just want to pry up the bottom of one of these little cups on the end um, and as you can see this one it's got brake fluid in there you never want to see that it's a bummer when you do um, and if you see brake fluid only in that little cup when you peel it up but you don't see it on your brake uh, shoes themselves then, hey, you caught it in time, maybe you can get away with just doing uh, the wheel cylinder itself. But oftentimes what happens is that little guy has popped and uh, your entire braking system is coated, uh, braking system back there under the drum, uh, it's just coated in crap um, and uh, because it's been soaked with brake fluid and it's no longer working. So uh, when you get to that point, that's a, you know obvious, you gotta redo everything. Now here at Modern Bay, for most of my customers, uh, what I end up doing is all the nuts and bolts, everything, a complete restoration on the brake system. Um, I don't require it or anything like that, but uh, of course. <laughs> but from a safety perspective, it's a good idea to make sure that system is 100% uh, operating up to spec. So uh, moving on with the video here, other things we want to look out for, uh, things that I often see you know, when I'm doing these. Um, so again, if you look, boom, right there. Uh, I'm just going to go down here. So this guy right here, spreader bar, uh, these very rarely break or have problems, but quite often you'll see uh, this guy right there. It's bent up. Uh, that's just from someone kind of manhandling it usually when they put it back together. Um, the other one also bent out a little bit. And so I just make a point. I always replace these. Uh, if they're not bent, they're in good shape. You're mostly fine. You, you should be just fine with them. But everything I do, it's nut and bolt, it's all the stuff. So that's that guy, something to look out for there. Um, another thing to look out for, uh, the emergency brake, uh, these little guys uh, that the emergency brake connects to. Uh, so when you pull that brake, it pulls it back. I'll show you right here. The e-brake cable is not on this, but it's right here. So uh, I, of course, replace those two. But what you really often see uh, with that guy is, well, two things. One, the pin is seized like this one is, and it doesn't move freely anymore. So you release the brake, but it doesn't actually release the shoes from the drum. So you're dragging your drum brakes. You're going even slower than you already were. Um, and it's just going to cause problems. Uh, I've actually had it to where um, I've basically melted everything. Uh, well, one of my employees who was driving a bus at one point, uh, one of our buses years ago, um, just basically melted everything back here because the, the shoes were dragging um, and they drove it for a long way like that. So it wasn't a pretty sight, um, you, just something you wanna make sure you know doesn't happen. More often than not though, these are seized and so it need to be replaced. And this system actually, I was surprised to see a pin. Sometimes people, if they don't have the pins, the proper hardware, um, they just put a like a bolt and a little tack weld on the end of the nut to hold this on, stuff like that. You know, it's, it's previous owner kind of stuff. You never really want to see, but you often do. So that's that. Something else to look out for. Uh, emergency brake cables. Again, <laughs> I feel like I'm, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I always replace all this stuff. Um, I don't want my clients to have any problems with any of it. So um, as long as they're willing and able, um, I recommend if there are any problems or if it's the original stuff replacing it. Um, 
This is what's left of the e-brake cable. I just nipped these off real quick just to get them out easily. Uh, but you'll often see this. Uh, you see that okay? So this is right where this e-brake cable goes under the spring plate on the rear suspension. And you know, on this bus, after 51 years or so of use, it has worn through that outer sheathing. Uh, thankfully, it has the outer sheathing. Um, but at some point, it would start to wear through the inner sheathing as well. To be clear, I've never actually seen it wear all the way through that, uh, unless it's on a severely lowered bus where the angles of things are all weird. Um, but for a stock height bus, I've never seen it go that far, but I really often see that. Um, but again, emergency brake, kind of important, so you want to make sure uh, you hedge your bets and uh, it's going to be you know, working uh, like it should. Another thing, <laughs> here we go, on and on. Um, so right here, so whenever I do these jobs, I actually separate the backing plate from um, the, uh, the hub, the bearing housing. Uh, and to do that, you got to get this little pin out. Um, I'm just going to be honest with you. Getting that out used to drive me bonkers. Um, it's this press fit from the factory thing, and um, it's it's really hard to get out. So uh, what I the the system I finally came up with to do it, which I'm pretty proud of. Get ready. <laughs> okay, so air hammer. Um, you know, got this in the shop. That's not the thing. The real thing is my super highly modified. Uh, bit for it. So I've just taken a grinder and I've ground that down. It's not pretty, but it works. I've ground it down to essentially the size of the pin. It's a little bit smaller. But one thing I've found, so if you're going to remove your backing plate and you need to get this pin out, uh, you're going to put a punch on the end, which is probably going to be something like that. And then you're going to wail on it for like 30 minutes. And then you're going to go inside, you're going to be all frustrated probably splash some water in your face <laughs> and, then, and then get your uh, get your gusto back up to go hit it again. Um, but the thing is many times when you just start wailing on this, it mushrooms this little pin. So instead of it being, you know, the, the diameter that should be, it starts to mushroom it out. So it's just actually working against itself at, the, at that point where it's working against the housing, making it harder and harder to remove. And then you got to get your drill, Ask why I have this handy. Uh, you got to get your drill and actually drill them out, uh, starting with a much smaller bit, trying to go straight through, and then graduating to a bigger bit, and then pounding the rest of it out. So if you do this, uh, get ready. These are not fun. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's that. And if you want to replace them, you can get them on McMaster Car, for example. Um, they're 10 millimeter pins. I think 22 millimeters uh, long, chamfered edge, and should be good to go once you put it back in there. So uh, that's that guy. Uh, another thing I see quite often is on the um, axle stub, that little guy sticking out right here, there's a cotter pin that goes in the end once you get your castle nut back on, which I don't have handy, but you'll know what I'm talking about if you have a bus and look at your bus. <laughs> so uh, these are often undersized. You need to get the correct size for this guy. Um, what I actually do when I do these jobs, um, I have a bunch of these baggied up hardware kits that include all the new stuff um, that I use for every single uh, rear brake build. Give me a shout if you'd want to buy one of these hardware kits. Um, it includes, this is, I didn't intend to sell anything here, but, but it includes all the brand new hardware, like all the nuts and bolts, um, so that you're not hunting for stuff and taking 15 trips to the hardware store and all that. At least that's why I did it for here in the shop. It makes it way easier um, to just get this job done. So that's that. Uh, I think I've gone through, ooh, check this out. Almost everything. So last thing, I feel like angels should be singing right now when I show this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to tone it down a bit, sorry. Um, all right, this is a brand new backing plate. You can buy these from Wolfsburg West. Uh, quick plug, Wolfsburg West, boom. Uh, this one may or may not be for the right side. Oh, got to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so this is for late base. So I can't use it on this guy. But when I get these, I they're almost always bent. They look super funky uh, if you look at them you know, from profile on the side here. Uh, because people pry on them to try to get the drums off, which you should never do. Um, and then from like, I don't know, 50 years of use. So 
Uh, other things, it's it's a great idea to a just start with one of these if you can instead of using your crusty old backing plates. But the other thing that happens to backing plates is if you look back here, you see those holes all right? So if you look back here, uh, if you look at a used backing plate, it almost always looks like uh, a beaver chewed on it back there uh, or some other rodent because people have stuck their screwdrivers in to try to adjust the brakes and it's just chewed up this housing because this is relatively thin metal uh, for this housing and you can't really torque on it that much. But I've seen these holes like super wide, uh, really messed up, in addition to everything being bent. So this is like, I don't know, maybe this is a trade secret whatever. Um, this is kind of awesome and I'm proud of it. So what I do is I take what's called clipped washer, blah, 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 clipped washers, just a washer and it's clipped. Um, and I do this. Can you see that? All right. Okay. So this one has not been repainted yet or anything, but basically I take that clipped washer and uh, weld all the way around it. So, so that there's a lot more meat right there. Because, you know, if you go to adjust these beautiful brand new brakes in a year, you're going to be fine. But if some person, you or somebody else, goes to adjust them in like 10 years, they're going to be like, man, why is this stuck? Hopefully my anti-seize has done its job and it still adjusts very freely. But depending on the bus and depending on your work um, and the environment that it's in and all that, maybe it's seized up. Um, I hope not, but maybe. If it has, these now have these beefy welded on washers to keep you from just destroying your housing when you're trying to adjust them. So honestly, I think I, I'm just like super proud of that. <laughs> um, probably way more than I should be. Um, but that is, this video is getting super long, like all of them. I start out thinking, hey, this is going to be a two minute video. And then it's like 10 minutes later. So that's the wrap. I'm going to wrap it up right there. Um, if you have any questions or anything, um, I'll be going off into the corner with my new, <laughs> with my new brakes um, over here. Actually, they're going on the bus here in about 10 minutes. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, as always, hit me with any questions. And if you need any help, give a shout. Otherwise, we'll talk to you soon.